Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise, and to give him all the glory. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and every last one of us should always be glad and always rejoice in it. We serve an awesome God. We serve a powerful God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God who still sits on the throne, who still performs miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And he is so worthy. Yes, he is. He is so worthy to be praised. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but I can't do it without Jesus. I can't make it without Jesus. I can't even comprehend without Jesus. I don't know if I'm coming or going without Jesus. I need him every second. I need him every minute. I need him every hour of my life right now today. I need him to take control over every last one of us. Even myself, I need him to continue to guide and direct us, mold us, shape us into his perfect image. Glory, hallelujah. Every today is a day to draw closer to the Lord. Because the more I draw closer to him, he will draw closer to us. There's not too hard, there's nothing too difficult that God cannot do. There's nothing too hard, there's nothing too difficult that God cannot do. He can do all things and more. You cannot box him in. You cannot put God in no lemon box and say, okay, God, can you really do that? Don't limit God and what God can do. He can do all things Things that things that things right now today it don't even make sense to you. If he's to tell you right now today what he can do. That's how awesome he is, that's how mighty he is. But your faith has to be the one that pleases him because if you don't have faith, you can't please God. Your faith cannot move mountains. So your faith has to go to extreme measures. You gotta believe and and have hope in it and trust, knowing that God's gonna come through, even though you might not be aware of it, even though it might not make sense to you, even though it's not even, it, might even, it might not even be clear to you, but you still got to trust them. You say, Jesus, I know you're going to do this for me. I know you're going to make it happen for me because I trust you. It's not too hard for you. It's not too difficult for you, Father God. That's why I thank you the way I do. That's why I praise you the way I do. That's why I glorify you the way I do because you are my everything. And if Jesus is your everything, Praise is you should always want to do. Because praise is not an on and off switch thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, he watches over every last one of us. And he happens in the palm of his hands. And he's going to work everything God according to his perfect will. Amen? Amen. If you have not worked in the Lord into your home or to your life, if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, I want to encourage you right now today. Please do so. What are you waiting on? His arms are open or wide. Please return back to your first love. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me all thanks. Give me all praise. Give me all glory. We just thank you, Heavenly Father God, for who you are, what you've done, and what you're about to do right now. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, how you're moving in our life. We thank you, Father God, how you're guiding us and directing us. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, how you're ordering our steps. We thank you, Father God, that we can always count on you, that we can always depend on you, that we can always rely on you. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for who you are, what you've done, and what you're about to do. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father God, for your love that you have for us. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for your patience. We thank you, Father God, for everything that you have done and what's taking place right now today. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we're about to receive, this powerful message right now today, Father God, that's going to keep us full today, going to keep us satisfied today. And there's no other place, Father God, that we're ready to be at right now today, Jesus, but right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God, giving you all thanks, giving you all praise, giving you all glory. We just thank you, Father God, right now today, because this is the day that you have made, and we're so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. We thank you, Father God, for the blessing that we're going to receive this season, the breakthrough that we're going to receive this season, the miracle 
that we're going to receive this season. The more than enough that we're going to receive in this season. We thank you, Father God, how you open up doors for us in this season. We thank you, Father God, for the connection, for the resources, Father God, in this season. We thank you, Father God, how we're going to meet our Boaz in this season. We thank you, Father God, for the rain that's going to rain down on our harvest in this season. We just thank you, Father God, how you turn things around for us in this season. We just thank you, Father God, for the, for the, for the more than enough, Father God, in this season right now. And Father God, we give me the thanks for it right now. We give me the praise for it right now. And we give me the glory, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, let your let your will be done today. Father God, let your words go out and she never turn back more today, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, you are King of kings. You are Lord of lords, God. You are the Prince of Peace, Father God. You are the Alpha and you are the Omega. You are the first and you are the last, Father God. Oh, Father God, we just thank you, Father God. We glorify, we magnify, we exalt your holy name right now today, Father God. Oh, Father God. This is your time. This is your moment that I know for a fact that you're about to show up, that I know for a fact that you're about to show out. Allow your love to move through this place. Allow your presence to move through this place. Allow your angels to join us in praise and worship, Father God, in this place right now today. Hallelujah. I believe and I declare, I decree right now today, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that someone's going to be healed today. Someone's going to be delivered today. Someone is ready to give their life over to you right now today, Jesus. And the angels are rejoicing in heaven right now today. And you will and you you shall get all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, this is your house. The house that you built on solid ground. The house that you built on solid foundation. The house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. Heavenly Father, all but Father, you are welcome right now. You're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord. Right here in your sanctuary. Right here on your YouTube channel. Right here on your platform. Right here in my brother's home. Right here in my brother's life. Right here in my sister's home. Right here in my sister's life. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you right now today, Father God, to move supernaturally in my brother and my sister's life right now today. I'm asking you right now today, today, Father God, for healing. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, to restore everything to my sisters, restore everything to my brothers right now, what the enemy have taken, what the enemy has stolen right now. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for a new thing for my brothers and sisters. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for guidance and direction for my brothers and sisters. I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for a blessing for my brothers and sisters, for a breakthrough for my brothers and sisters, for a miracle for my brothers and sisters. I'm asking you, Father God, right now today, God, that God, that you about to turn it out for my brothers and sisters right now today, God. That, Father God, no longer would they be able, no longer they be in pain no more. No longer, Father God, they be, they be the borrower anymore, God. No longer, Father God, they be crying no more, God. That, God, that you are turning the tables around for them right now today, God. That, God, that you are fixing the issue for them right now today, God. That the problems already be solved, God. The cake is already baked, Father God. And, Father God, we give you the thanks for the advance. We give you the praise for the advance. And we give you all the glory, God, because we thank you for it, Jesus. We pray for it, we believed in it, and we stand on faith on it, God. And God, you're doing the rest. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you're welcome right now. You're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord. Right here in this sanctuary, right here on this YouTube channel, right here on this platform, right here in my sister's home, right here in my sister's life, right here in my brother's home, right here in my brother's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to comfort us right now today because you are a comforter. I'm asking you right now today to control our thoughts, control our minds, so we hear your soft, still voice right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move to this place like you never moved before, so we catch the Holy Ghost fight through this sermon, through this service right now. Holy Spirit, please forgive us for grieving you today. As we repent of our sins today, Father God, please forgive us for our sin today, known and unknown right now. Wash us through your blood right now. Clean us as white as snow right now. Heavenly Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for coming through. Thank you, Father God, for always being there for us, God. Father God, words cannot explain how thankful, how grateful, how honored and blessed I am to always pray. Praise and have fellowship with all my brothers, all my sisters today, Father God, and one body in Christ today. Words cannot explain how thankful I am, how grateful I am, how honored I am to always be in the house of the Lord. This to always be in your presence, Father God, to always seek you, serve you, Father God, but always be about my Father's business, Father God. But most of all, Jesus, it's all about you. Glory be to God. Heavenly Father God, before I get started, 
It's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that stays in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and the fruit of my lips about you. And I've got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and I shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I pour my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I trust you the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why you are my everything, Father God. That's why I can't thank you enough. That's why you my first love will always be my first love, Jesus. That's why I can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you read it with God's word, let the church say amen. Amen, amen. Don't be surprised, my sisters. Don't be surprised, my brothers. All of a sudden, somebody is going to want to talk. Even though that you've been asking this person all type of questions. And they've been telling you, why are you asking me questions like this? You know I'm not doing anything. You can trust me. You can have faith in me. But the whole time, your intuition has been telling you something about this person. Your intuition has been telling you that something has not been right. Your intuition has been telling you that something has been funky and something been funny about this person. Your intuition has been telling you that this person has been hiding a secret. And whenever a person is hiding a secret, and the more that you get close to that secret, they don't want you to know about those skeletons in the closet. They try to hide themselves. They try to persuade you like nothing is going on. They try to persuade you like nothing never happening. They try to persuade you that you're losing your mind. They try to persuade you like, like you're going crazy, like you need to go to the mental health uh, department and collect the check of the first month. But the whole time, your intuition, which is the Holy Spirit is telling you, say something is just not right. Something's not adding up. And the more you keep looking at it, your story stays the same. Nothing about your story has changed, not one second, not one minute. But they still continue to lie. And you know somebody lying because they can't even look in your eye. Or they looking all at the ground, they staring in the space like they see Pluto or Mars or Jupiter somewhere. And you say, boy, you can't look at me. Why are you stuttering? Why are you sweating so much? If you ain't did nothing, you ain't got nothing to worry about. But you know. You know something's wrong. You know something is off. Because your intuition is not going to tell you nothing wrong. The Holy Spirit is going to tell you. The Holy Spirit is going to reveal say, hey, something wrong about this person right here. And we all know the Holy Spirit don't lie. But as time goes on, God going to start exposing some people. And when the Lord starts exposing, really for what it is, all of a sudden they want to talk right now. All of a sudden right now, they got a second win. All of a sudden right now, they're trying to retract their story and say, oh, I messed up. Or maybe you and I, we were going through things. Or you and I, we were oh, no. Nah. We ain't trying to hear you and I was going through things. I ain't trying to hear that you and I was on the same page. I don't want to hear that you and I was beefing because we could have talked about this when I plainly asked you the first time, are you doing something? There's anything that need to be Address. Is there anything that need to come out of the closet? Is there anything that I need to know to be aware of? You swore up and down that I was crazy. You swore up and down that I was losing my mind. You swore up and down I was making it up. You telling everybody that there's something wrong with me. That you know, so he don't know why he acting like that. She don't know why she acting like that. But the whole time, it wasn't nothing crazy with you. You weren't losing your mind. It was something that's telling you something was wrong with them. And your intuition was what? Right on time. It was right on time. You better believe it. And you better trust it. It's going to come a time. When the truth hit, and whatever it is that was hidden in the dark, when it comes to the light, and when God exposed them for who they are, oh, you best believe they want to talk then. Oh, yes, they want to talk like they in court then. Oh, they want to cry and beg like they keep sweat then. But no, nah, we ain't trying to hear that crying then. We don't hear that begging then. We don't want to hear that talk then because you had enough time to talk to me. 
I told you to be a woman about it. I told you to be a man about it. I told you to be a friend about it. I told you to be a, a co-worker about it. I told you to be a church member about it. But you still was lying when I knew that you was lying at the front of your teeth. I knew that you was lying about something. And all you do is keep it real with me. It would have been water up under the bridge. But no, you still continue to lie over and over and over again. When all this could have been dealt with a long time ago. We could have killed this situation a long time ago. But why lie about something when we know that you lie? It don't make sense. It don't add up. But you continue to lie over and over and over again. For what? What was you getting out of that situation by lying so much? Please tell me the truth. I have to know. What? Right. But now you want to talk right now. But you didn't want to talk a couple of weeks ago when I bought it up. You didn't want to talk a couple of days ago, I bought it back up again. You didn't want to talk about when I first bought it up a couple of months ago or even a year ago. You didn't want to talk about it. You kept brushing out to my man, get out of my face. Oh man, you talking crazy. Oh man, you talking foolish. Nah, bro. Nah, sis. We want talking crazy. We want talking foolish. And we want crazy. And we sure won't lose our mind. It was just something that the Holy Spirit had put on our spirit for us to know something about you. That something just wasn't right. It doesn't matter how long it kept going on, our story never changed. Our intuition about you never changed. What we knew what was right was right there, but we just couldn't see it. But God said, you weren't ready to see it yet. But God said, now, you're ready now because you're at the point right now today that you're already over the situation. You're ready, you ready for that bygone to be bygone. But God said, before that, before you leap and take that leap of faith, get ready to the next level or the next stage of your life, I'm going to reveal everything which you already felt, what you already knew, what was going on behind closed doors. Some people have some skeletons in their closet. Some people still mess with their exes behind your back, but they were telling you that it was over with. They were still messing with their baby mama and baby daddies as they told you that they were no longer messing around. They was in everybody's DMs checking on them, but telling you you the only thing they're looking for, you the only thing they want. They was taking and stealing and using from you, but looking out for other people who didn't care anything about them. They were setting you up for the trap. They were secretly hating on you and being jealous of you and being envious of you the whole time. And God said, I'm going to show you who they are. And God is going to expose them. And when the Lord exposed them, now they want to talk. Oh, yeah. They want, to, they want to hold down a secret meeting then. They want you to sit down and listen to them. I'm going to go ahead and tell you what's going to happen. They already have rehearsed everything what they're going to say to you. They have rehearsed it so much, they know line for line, strip for strip. They ain't going to miss a beat. You know why they ain't going to miss a beat? Because they already have rehearsed what they're going to tell you. They already rehearsed what they're going to talk about. It's been planted in their head over and over again. They went over it. They have wrote it down on notes. And they looked at those notes and they rehearsed line for line. When I see him, when I see her, they even acted out. They even put a little drama skit in there on how they're going to fall out, on how they're going to be sweating, on how they're going to be fake, fake with them um, alligator tears. They already rehearsed that too. It's already, it's already lined out. It's already addressed on how they're going to do it, when they're going to do it, and when they should do it. It's already there. And you don't even see it. And you don't even realize it. But guess what? Sooner or later you're going to see it. Sooner or later you're going to realize it. They mistreated you. They lied on you. They abused you. They took you for granted. And they deceived you. They was not real. They was not loyal. And they was not honest. At the end of the day, they was fake. And they was phony. And God's going to show you how fake they was, how phony they was. Even their friendship, even their love. Everything about them, how they said they felt about you, was all lies. It was nothing real about him or her on how they felt about you. And it really wasn't. 
And trust and believe when they get caught, because they're going to get caught. Because right now today, they don't want you to know something. They've been hiding a secret for quite some, long, for quite some time. And, and you're getting close to their secret. See, the more that you get close to their secret, they pushing you away because it's something they don't want you to know. My grandma always said, somebody got secrets like that. Somebody always push, um, brushing you away. Somebody always got their eyes on the ground. They don't want you to know about the skeleton that they have in their closet. Because right now they got a lot of skeletons in their closet. But guess what? Fright night is about to come out. Oh, yeah. Sh Scooby Doo and the mystery band is about to come out. And you want to know everything about this mysterious person that you already knew, that you already felt about this person long ago. And you about to see it because God is about to reveal everything to you. Are oh, you following what I'm saying right now today? Amen? Amen. So I'm just going to keep it real with you. It's going to happen. And you believe it's going to happen. Let's turn about to Luke 12. And we're going to read verses 2 and 3. It's Luke chapter 12. And we're going to read verses 2 and 3. Luke 12. Verse 2 and 3. If you have it, say glory, hallelujah. I have it. There is nothing concealed that would not be disclosed or hidden that would not be made known. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight. And what you have whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be, will be proclaimed from the roof. So whatever it is that being hidden in the dark is going to come to light. But every day that you spoke in the hidden room, when you think nobody can hear you, it's going to be concealed. It's going to be loud enough that that person is going to hear it. And they're going to recognize your voice because you know what? There's nobody's voice like you. You have a, a real distinct voice. And they're going to know your voice from anywhere. They're going to say, you know what? I know that voice. I know who that is. You ain't got to go look for it, my sisters. You ain't got to go look for it, my brothers. It's going to be presented right there in front of your face. Hand to hand on a silver platter. And you better believe it. God is saying, get ready because I'm going to expose them for who they are. Get ready. I'm going to expose every lie, every secret they have been hiding from you. God said, get ready because I'm going to expose the liar who they really are. You've been waiting for a long time. But God said, you weren't ready to receive it yet. You was too much in your feelings back then. But now you don't got all your feelings. Now you kind of you kind of over right now. You just ready to just move on with your life right now. You ready to know to start over. So God said, now they're in, the, they're in the state of mind that they're ready right now. So God's in the state of mind to show you and reveal to you really for what it is. And guess what? They're going to want to talk now. A couple of days ago, they didn't want to talk to you. A couple of weeks ago, they didn't want to talk to you. A, couple, a year ago, a couple of months ago, they didn't, want, they, they didn't have anything to say to you. But when they get exposed and everything is let out, oh, you best believe it. They're going to want to talk to you then. They're going to want to talk to you then. But I'm here today to tell somebody, we don't want to hear. It's too late. Say that story to somebody else. Say no crocodile, no crocodile tell to somebody else. All they begging and crying like he sweat. Go cry and beg to somebody else. Ain't no need to cry and beg to me now. I'm over it now. Ain't no need to share no fake crocodile tears with me now. I'm over with it now. Ain't no need trying to want to talk to me now. I'm over with it now. I'm over, over with it now. And if you know that you're over with it, say, I'm over with it now. I don't want to talk about it. You didn't want to talk about it when I want to talk about it, so I don't want to talk about it now. It does not work on your time, my brothers and sisters. So when I, when I was ready to talk about it, you was, not guess what? Having your way. Because you can have it. Because I'm done. And I don't want to hear it anymore. And if you know that God is talking to you and this word is for you, and you know you've been feeling some type of way, and your intuition been telling you something, God said your intuition is right. The Holy Spirit is telling you something, but be aware, because God is going to expose them. But he said also be aware. When he exposed them, they're going to want to talk. But the talking is done, and the talking is over with now. Amen? Amen. If you like what you heard today, and this word is for you today, Go on here, Jesus like button. Go on here, the subscribe button as well. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. By us praying a simple little prayer that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. 
And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is Boogers.LT. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happening. Continue to hold on to his unchangeable hands and please do not let it go. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if they'll see their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm serving Minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' glory, holy mighty name. Amen.